everyone. Welcome to Santa Fe, my hometown. Um, we're going to get started talking about recurrent T1 high-grade uh, bladder cancer after BCG. Um, do we give more intravesical therapy or radical cystectomy? I don't have any disclosures. So this is going to be our index patient. We've got a 53-year-old male with gross hematuria. He had initial TRBT with large T1 high-grade tumor. Muscle, uh, muscularis propria was present within the specimen, and there was no lymphovascular invasion. He had a repeat TRBT, and there was no tumor seen. He had appropriate staging, no metastatic disease. He underwent induction BCG, completed a full six-week course, and following this, had a cystoscopy 10 weeks after starting BCG, and there were three papillary tumors. These were resected, and they came back as T1 high grade. We see T1 high grade about a quarter of the time. Um, and the patients who don't respond are a subgroup of that. Um, this patient was treated appropriately, however, his treatment failed. Um, Non-muscle invasive uh, bladder cancer may not respond at all. It may relapse. We've, um, we've had a new term in our field, uh, BCG unresponsive. And this is to help make, you know, to sort of, we are all using the same language now. It helps, you know, synthesizing the different um, studies uh, easier. And, and, and what this means is persistent or recurrent CIS plus or minus papillary disease within 12 months of completion of BCG or recurrent high-grade TA or T1 tumors within six months of adequate BCG. And uh, what is adequate BCG? It's having received at least five uh, of six doses of induction with at least two doses of either maintenance course or repeat induction. And then the third uh, group is uh, T, uh, T1 high-grade disease at uh, the first evaluation following BCG induction. And this is our patient here. Oops. Um, so how do we manage these patients? The guidelines tell us that um, we should pr perform a repeat biopsy of the prostatic urethra, evaluate the upper tracts. We need to offer these patients a cystectomy right off the bat. And the choice for this should depend upon um, patient preference, of course, but the nature of the recurrence, timing, the results of your repeat TUR. Uh, we don't really have a lot of great prospective data to guide us on this, but cystectomy really is, in terms of long-term survival, the safest approach. It also comes with high risk of surgery. Uh, patients who have comorbidities may be at higher risk. We may be over-treating people who may not otherwise recur. But if we delay cystectomy in favor of other treatments, we may be increasing the risk of progression and even death. So radical cystectomy is the preferred option, although um, cystectomy can be life-saving. It is associated with morbidity, mortality, and decreased quality of life. The other benefits for cystectomy is we get true pathologic staging. We get to an understanding of lymph node involvement, which is a, a good prognostic indicator. We um, determine uh, who has um, upstage degree, uh, disease, which is a clinically significant risk in this population. Patients are candidates for nerve sparing uh, surgery. They can get neobladders. Um, and again, their risk of progression, uh, sorry, recurrence is, is much lower. Yet, in 20, despite the guidelines, in 2022, a survey of urologists in uh, the US showed that only 25% of patients, uh, sorry, urologists who were surveyed would consider radical cystectomy for patients who are BCG unresponsive. Um, and more than half utilized intravesical chemotherapy for these patients. So do we have time to find an alternative to cystectomy? Not really. It turns out the longer we wait, the more TURBTs we perform, the longer we delay um, definitive treatment, the worse prognosis these uh, patients have. Why not continued BCG? It seldom works, and waiting for recurrence or progression is still dangerous. Um, I'm going to just beat this dead horse for a little bit longer. Failure to achieve complete response with induction BCG is, is, is associated with death. This is an, 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 a much older study conducted by Dr. Lerner um, in 2009. There were almost 600 patients, and 143 were randomized to no maintenance. Um, complete response during induction BCG was a, a significant predictor of survival. 
Five-year survival probability of 77% uh, versus 62% with no complete response. Um, and this is the, uh, the curves associated with that showing low, lower survival for those who were not um, uh, initially complete responders. So we also know that five years after a recurrence, the incidence to um, progression of muscle invasive disease is not insignificant. Um, in this historical cohort, it's about 71%, and, and in more contemporary cohorts, it's about 28%. And this is important. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, at five years after recurrence, uh, the incidence of death from disease is also significant. In this historical cohort, 48% uh, and 31% in the more contemporary uh, group. So we know that BCG seldom works. What are our other options if, uh, aside from cystectomy? Initially, uh, there, there were many uh, intravesical uh, chemotherapeutic agents that were evaluated. I'm not going to go into all of those. I'll mention gemcitabine. Um, in this trial from 2010, there were, it was a randomized phase two trial with 80 patients. Um, the results favored gemcitabine, but really they were not much better than uh, when compared to BCG. So neither of these were very effective. Currently, um, we are recommending, um, for in terms of chemotherapeutic options, the combination of gemcitabine and docetaxel. In this multi-institutional uh, retrospective study of 276 patients with uh, non-muscle invasive disease and BCG failure, the two-year overall recurrence-free survival was 46%. And um, for the subset of, of patients who did not have CIS and just high-grade papillary disease, it was about 52%. Um, re having received maintenance uh, uh, therapy among the responders was associated with no disease recurrence in this study. So the, you know, recommendations are currently that patients receive an induction course with um, GEMDOSI with extended monthly maintenance for one, one to two years. Uh, I think this is basically, oh, this, this is the data for the patients who had, um, uh, who were non-responders from the beginning, um, their two-year, uh, for, for the non-CIS patients, the two-year recurrence-free survival was 58%, and the progression rate at two years for the entire cohort was about 7%. Um, Neophergine is a relatively new uh, treatment option. There was a multi-center phase three trial. This is an intravesical adenovirus vector carrying the um, interferon alpha 2B gene. Um, it was a study that included 157 patients. 32% of them had high grade uh, TA or T1. And of those, the recurrence free survival was 43%. 6% of patients in this cohort progressed to uh, mu uh, muscle invasive disease. Although this drug was approved for um, patients with, uh, and studied in patients with CIS plus or minus papillary disease, it is still an option for patients who opt for bladder sparing um, therapies in patients who don't have CIS and only um, TA or T1 high grade. Um, we'll talk about pembrolizumab. Everyone should be fairly f familiar with the keynote study. This was a multi-cohort single-arm phase two study Cohort B included patients who did not have CIS. Um, and within that group, there were 132 patients. The one-year disease-free survival was 43.5%, with a median disease-free survival of 7.7 .7 months. 22% uh, percent of patients in this uh, cohort progressed to muscle invasive disease or, met or metastatic disease. And of note, 10% of patients had to stop treatment because of adverse events. And this is unique among um, uh, non-cystectomy options because most of the other treatments that we're using for this um, type of patient don't have really a high rate of, uh, of serious adverse events. So the efficacy and the, and the choice to use this should be weighed against the risk of the adverse events. And I think it should be used when the safer options have been exhausted or aren't available. Uh, Noga Pentakin, or otherwise known as N803, is another rather recent um, 
development. This multi-center phase three study looked at this agent. It is an IL-15 super agonist that is used in conjunction with BCG. Um, they studied 77 patients who did not have CIS, only the papillary high-grade non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. The two-year disease-free survival for this was 48.3% with the median disease-free survival of 19.3 months. The two-year progression-free survival was 88.8%. Uh, um, basically, this drug works in conjunction with BCG and it boosts the immune response that uh, from uh, of being primed by BCG, but it still requires BCG. And in this era of um, BCG shortage, it may be difficult to use this. Why not chemo radiation? There's not a lot of good data in this subgroup. We still have the risk of understaging, and there may be bladder compliance issues in patients who have had intravesical therapy. And this trial. Um, we looked at patients with stage T1 high grade who had failed intravesical therapy. There were 37 patients with five-year follow-up. Results weren't very good. The th three-year rate for no cystectomy, uh, or patients who didn't undergo cystectomy ultimately, was about 88%. And the overall survival at three and five years was 69 and 56%. The metastasis rate at five years was 20%. Eight patients died from cancer. What is the optimal timing for surgery? How soon do we need to intervene with cystectomy for these patients? We're already delaying it too much. We know from all of this data that there's about a 27 to 51% risk of upstaging to muscle invasive disease at the time of radical cystectomy. Um, there is a survival benefit to early cystectomy in patients who delay um, are at increased risk for progressing to T2 disease. And what we know is that patients who are allowed to progress to T2 disease actually have, um, they fare worse and have a poorer prognosis than people who present with T2 disease from the very beginning. So the current options for failure, um, for patients who are BCG unresponsive are number one, radical cystectomy, enroll, uh, enrollment of clinical trials for new treatment strategies, or bladder preserving, bladder sparing strategies for patients who are either unsuitable for cystectomy or who are staunchly uh, against or refuse uh, radical cystectomy. In conclusion, if cystectomy isn't an option, patients must undergo an aggressive initial TURBT. They need close surveillance, and due to the risks of uh, of uh, understaging initially and the possibility of lymph node uh, metastasis, you need to repeat your TURBT to confirm no residual disease and make sure that from the beginning you're getting good cross-sectional uh, imaging to establish a baseline and rule out metastatic disease. T1 uh, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer is aggressive but curable. Patients who fail um, BCG therapy are at risk for muscle invasion and death from disease. Cystectomy remains the standard of care in this cohort, um, but intravesical therapy is still an acceptable option. There are no randomized control uh, trials comparing the two options. Thank you. <laughs>